So, <laughs> it's a codicy <laughs> instead of astami. On the codicy day, it's when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita uh, to Arjuna. And uh, this uh, is celebrated because it's, it's the appearance day of Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna and Krishna's name are the same. So also Krishna and Krishna's book is the same. So therefore, there's also Bhagavad Gita is a kind of avatar. Uh, and so the first time it's spoken, uh, we, uh, that was one of its appearances. Now, of course, we now have these printed books, but that that's, is just an accommodation for our stupidity. <laughs> because in the old days, the really old days, nobody wrote anything down because they had perfectly good memories. The teacher could speak, the students would hear, and they remember. They had brains. We have hard drives and <laughs> instead. And with their brains, they had very, very, very sharp memories. So these things have declined. And so that's why uh, when, when uh, uh, the, the Bhagavad Gita was speaker, spoken, then also later on, Vyasadeva wrote it down so that people can understand it. It's easy to understand. I took a university Sanskrit course, and after your first year, you can pretty much read Bhagavad Gita. You get a little help from a grammar book, but it's very, very simple. It's like almost children's language. If you you can you can be very good at reading the Bhagavad Gita, or in fact the Mahabharata, the says part of the Mahabharata, it's embedded in the Mahabharata, or the Ramayana. It's very simple, and you you learn that, and then you go to Bhagavata, much more sophisticated and difficult to understand. So it's very, very simple. So this is the, the brilliance of Krishna as he would actually take for us the whole the essence of Vedic knowledge. Because, because the question is in the beginning by Arjuna, what is my karma? What is my karma? What am I supposed to do? What am I meant to do in this situation? And Krishna actually, when you go to Dharma, okay, what the, 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 uh, Dharma is what is given in the uh, in the in the, the Vedic literature. Dharma means what you are supposed to do. So, what is my Dharma? What am I supposed to do? And and so Krishna takes this to its depths. You know, not just what am I? Simple question. In, in, in regard to this battle, what am I supposed to do? What is my dharma? But then Krishna just opens it up all the way to look at this question at, at its deeper, deepest level. <coughs> because of, you know, there, there, there are many, many facets to dharma, many, many kinds of things that are said, and there's, there's swadharma, uh, and, and, and there's you know, sanatan dharma, so it's all analyzed and laid out. It's brilliant. But it's done in such a simple, easy to understand way. And it's in the Mahabharata because the Mahabharata is, well, it was easy in India at one point to turn it into a television series <laughs> because it's kind of like a soap opera. You know, it's a really exciting story. And the Mahabharata has so many moving things, and things drama, and suspense, and betrayal, and grief, and joy. All of these things are there, you know, big time. But in, so you people look at it because it's just a great story. But then in the middle of it, you know, is the Bhagavad Gita. And in the Gita Mahatya, it's, it's stated that, that the Mahabharata is like a jewel. But the Bhagavad Gita is the jewel in the setting. The main reason that the Mahabharata exists is to give us this Bhagavad Gita. So, actually, just by understanding the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "Okay, here's the here's the Vedas. There they uh, teach uh, many different things. 
Shruti or Vivinam, it also says in the Mahat, but this, this, the Sanskrits exist in different, are divided, some say this. So what is, what is really the essence of it? What is really the, the ultimate Dharma? And so Krishna himself takes you through it and says, you know, here is ultimately, if you actually take all these Dharmas and you follow them out to the perfectional end, he says, Sarvadharmam Purajjaja Mahamekam Saranam Bhajaja. You can all these other different dharmas. They all are just different ways of coming to me. Indirect ways, sideways ways, some more direct. But if they all are supposed to come, they end in me, then you can make a quick work of it. Sarvadharmam Purajjaja. And you can come to me directly. You can just dump everything and come to me directly. Oh, if you think if I do that, if I you know, neglect something, and there'll be some sin? No. If you do, I'll relieve you of that sin. And Don't worry. So that, that, that's the summary, the concluding, really, verse of the Bhagavad Gita. And if you're not convinced, read it again and read it again, and you'll finally find all your questions are answered. So we have to be very grateful for the and thankful for this because if we read the Bhagavad Gita in the right way hearing from the right people in the right association we will have the exact same experience that Arjuna had with Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita there is actually no difference it, it, it is not lost at all but is present here and so it, actually every time we pick up the Bhagavad Gita or hear Bhagavad Gita in the association of devotees. It's also Gita Jayan. Thank you.